Today? In today's episode, we'll be learning a new music clef. But before that, let's do a quick recap. This is the treble clef. The treble clef is also called the G clef because at the beginning of the curl in the design of the treble clef, it is always surrounded around line 2, which is the G note from middle C. The G note is also the landmark note for treble clef. I remember that! Treble clef, G clef. Good. Now, this is a bass clef. The bass clef is also called an F clef because the F clef's design centers around line 4, which is the F note. The F note is also the landmark note for bass clef. I remember bass clef too. Now, let's locate the middle C for each of the clefs. For treble clef, middle C is on the first ledger line below the stave. For bass clef, middle C is on the first ledger line above the stave. When we place it on a grand stave, both clefs share the same middle C. When we talk about middle C, instantly it reminds me of a specific clef. The new clef for today is the alto clef. Alto clef! This is an alto clef. It is also known as a C clef. Why is an alto clef also a C clef? Good question. Let's take a closer look at the symbol. It evolved from a cursive letter C. The letter C was inverted and mirrored underneath itself. The intersection of the two C's on line 3 gives you the landmark note of middle C for alto clef. And hence, alto clef is C clef. Alto clef. C clef. Okie dokie. Now you know that the middle C is your landmark note for the alto clef, let's find the remaining notes above and below the line. From middle C, counting up in ascending order, we have D, E, F, G, and A. Then from middle C, counting down in descending order, we have B, a, G, F, and E. Teacher, how to draw an alto clef? Let's get right to it. On a music stave, start on the very left corner from line 5. Draw two straight lines all the way down to line 1. From line 4, draw a backward C and stop in space 3. Then, connect the end of the backward C to the inner straight line with a short dash and meet on line 3. Draw another dash, but now in the opposite direction, and stop in space 2. Then with another backward C from the end of the dash, and finish on line 1. And there you have it, an alto clef. Ooh, that's hard! Don't worry, Ruby. There's a simple way of drawing the alto clef. First, two straight lines from line 5 all the way down to line 1. Same like the previous version. Here's the simplified part. From the inner line intersection with line 3, draw a curve upwards to line 5 and another curve downwards to line 1. There you go! A simplified version of the alto clef. Yippee! That's easy! Now let's take a look at how key signatures are written in alto clef. Here's the good news for you. The sequence of the sharps and flats are the same. The focus is to know where the notes are in alto clef. Let's start with the sharps. The first sharp we see is F sharp, followed by C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, and finally B sharp. Next, let's take a look at the flats. The first flat we see is B flat, then followed by E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and finally F flat. Okie dokie! But teacher, when do we use the alto clef? Very good question. The alto clef is primarily used for the mid-range instrument. The viola and alto trombone are generally the only instruments that use this clef. Wow, that's cool! Thank you so much for watching this episode. We hope you had fun learning this new clef. 
Remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more updates. Click on the little bell to receive notification on our latest posts. See you next time!